There are more and more multicolor solutions coming to the market these days. You have companies like Bamboo Lab that has the AMS, AMS Lite, AMS 2. You have Creality with their new CFS, and even Anycubic has one, which is the Ace Pro. And then you have open source solutions like the Armored Turtle, uh, MMUs the Enraged Carrot Feeder. There are a number of options to choose from, some proprietary and some not. And that is where companies like Coprint have started to come about. So Coprint offers a multi-material system that is a direct drop-in replacement for any Clipper or Marlin-based printer. Now, is it really worth doing? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. I'm Aaron, this is the Printosaurus, and we're gonna get right into it. Before we get started, I just want to let you know, Coprint did reach out. They provided me with the KCM set and asked if I would review it. Uh, but rest assured, this is an honest review. Uh, this is what I feel and think about this product. Uh, and honesty and integrity, very important things. So don't worry about that. We're going to take a look at this thing and give it a fair assessment. So I'm going to be using my Solvol SV08 uh, for today's uh, review. Um, I'm going to utilize Coprint's KCM set uh, and what that is is it's a group of components um, that allow you to retrofit your printer to multicolor print uh, so we'll start with the kcm the kcm is your clipper control module and that is the brains of the operation that controls the extruders talks to the chroma head uh, that tool head features a filament cutter uh, run out sensor a eight port hub, a high flow hot end. And then also you have uh, your actual extruders that uh, deliver the filament to the tool head itself. And those are controlled again by that KCM. Now the Coprint setup does work uh, for a large majority of Clipper-based printers, also the Marlin printers that I mentioned. Uh, if you go to their website, uh, they do have a table of printers that they are currently compatible with. Uh, I chose the SV08 to work with, and uh, you will need to download a couple of things there. Uh, so you're going to end up downloading uh, some mounts for your extruders, and then you're also going to need to download a mount and print that for your Chroma uh, tool head. Let's talk about the solution that I ended up going with for mounting um, my extruders, the KCM, and uh, you know how I want to route uh, my filament. Uh, so I, I took to the internet. I was curious to see if there was a different design from what Coprint had to offer. And on printables, I found G-Code Gearhead. Uh, what this is, is it's, uh, it's very similar to uh, what I consider the box turtle or armored turtle design to be. And if I flip this over, you can see here, I have the four extruders. And then on this side over here, I have that KCM mounted. All the wires are ran neat. Uh, I like this because it tucks all the electronics up and in and you don't see any of those wires. I'm a big fan of good cable management. Uh, and this is a great example of that. Another thing I like about it, if you're doing the co-print for the SV08, is uh, this gets everything up off of the back of the printer. And I mentioned the cable management and everything. So you can really have like a polished finished product by using something like this. And then your spools are mounted up top. Uh, so they're not hanging off the back or in the way. Uh, and it makes moving things around a little bit easier as well. Uh, so that is the design that I went with for um, mounting the extruders and the KCM. So let's move on to the Chroma tool head now. Depending on what printer you're using, uh, I mentioned going to the website, looking at their compatibility chart. Uh, and within that chart, you're gonna find what mounts that they have available, uh, Coprint. Um, I went a different route with my mounts as well. I found a lightweight mount uh, by Valerie on printables. Uh, I liked it because it was a little sleeker. Nothing wrong with the standard Coprint mount either. Uh, this is just me uh, utilizing the community and what's out there to see how well and give some credit to some of these individuals that are designing this stuff. Easy enough to mount, the co-print instructions work really well. Uh, it's basically remove three screws from the tool head, disconnect your electronics from the tool head, pull that off, mount the chroma head, uh, and then connect your chroma head to the KCM. Uh, so there's a, you know one cable for that. I have another cable here, so what that is, 
actually is my Eddy USB. So you have a standard probe that comes with the chroma head, uh, and that works fine, uh, no issues, but I really liked uh, the speed and everything of the Eddy USB. Uh, I had done a video on that, upgrading to, and I really didn't want to move on without it if I continue to use Coprint on my SV-08. Uh, so lucky enough, uh, the bolt pattern, the footprint and everything, and the probes are the same. Uh, so basically, I just swapped the probe, changed my eddy offsets to match that of the probe on this tool head, and uh, ran my USB cable up and through uh, the tool head and down to where it needed to be. Pretty easy. So today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, PCBWay.com. Jump online and check out their 11th anniversary. They have a sale going on uh, from June 18th to July 18th. Uh, lots of great deals. They have a contest that you can sign up for as well. A very good service. Uh, if you need 3D printing, CNCing, uh, PCBs, you name it, uh, they're able to do it. Quality service, customer service is great. So ask any questions you might have. Uh, shipping times are also fantastic. PCBWay, PCBWay.com. So we've got everything mounted. We are ready to move on. Uh, following along with the co-print instructions, uh, we need to do uh, some configuration changes. Uh, so going back to that wiki page, you uh, just download uh, the configs that they have listed. Uh, what I do first before I mess with any of my configurations, and this is a universal tip here, always, always, always back up your existing configs because you never know if you need to go back um, or you need to reference something. Uh, it's really important to have those saved somewhere. With this being a clipper printer, uh, jump on a main sale and then you can go down to your machine tab uh, and then you can highlight all your files and download a backup. Okay, once you've done that, we're now ready to upload those new files. So upload those, follow along with Coprint's instructions. Uh, as I mentioned, they're well-written for these parts of the installation. Uh, what we need to do is SSH into our printer. Uh, and what we're looking for is the device IDs for our new devices, which is the KCM and the Chroma Toolhead. So you're going to follow those instructions. We uh, list our USB devices, find the device names, and then we copy and paste those in those configs. Coprint recommends using Orca, uh, and Orca actually has a plugin already for the Coprint. So it's a good baseline to get going. Easy enough to download your Orca slicer. Uh, and then again, uh, the instructions kind of get you in the right direction for your baseline settings. So we've got everything set up now, um, and this is where Coprint's instructions uh, pretty much uh, stop, and that's where we need to start figuring things out. And part of this review, that's what I really wanna focus on. You know, this is a universal product, um, and what I mean by that is by design, uh, it's supposed to be adaptable to uh, a bunch of different Marlin printers, a bunch of different clipper-based printers. So you're going to have to, at a minimum, learn to manipulate some things here and there to get this optimized for whatever printer you're using it on. I'm using the SV-08. There's quite a bit of good information on the Discord. This is where we're going to utilize a community and look at that and see uh, if we can get the rest of our printer configured and uh, you know, kind of set up so that it prints perfectly. And I was able to do that. The Discord server that they have, Coprints community is really good. Uh, a lot of active members in there, a lot of good information. Uh, one of those things that I found very, very useful and you will see when you load this up and you load your filament, it doesn't automatically load. You've got to press the load button a bunch of times to get it to feed the filament all the way down to the tool head. So Armor Turtle uh, does it automatically. Um, so it feeds all the way down to the runout sensor. You calculate those distances so it knows when it hits the runout sensor uh, and when to stop. Uh, that's how it, it tells uh, whether or not uh, that filament's loaded in the tool head. Uh, this doesn't initially. Um, it does manually. Uh, I wanted to do that automatically. So I took to the Discord and I found that information. Uh, there is a auto load. A config that we downloaded. Link to that is down below. Uh, and that auto load config allows um, you to select which extruder you want and then uh, load your filament and it will run all the way down to that filament sensor, uh, the runout sensor, and it will stop and it will back up about five millimeters and it is now pre-staged or loaded. And you can do that for each color, way easier. Uh, so that is something I suggest you guys do. And that works for, for all your printers because again, this is designed to be universal. So a lot of these configs you're gonna be able to use for whatever use case that you're using the co-print setup for. So once we got past that, uh, it's time to 
to start printing. Um, so the process is relatively simple. You need to load your filament. Uh, so you have macros to do that. Um, and it's relatively simple as you can see in the on-screen example here. Uh, and then once you've got your filament loaded, it is time to uh, try and do a test print. So first test print I did, I just did a two color print and uh, turned out really well. Uh, there is some tweaking you're gonna need to do in Orca. Uh, and that's the case with, uh, I would say all multicolor prints. So you're gonna have to tweak your purge volumes and things like that. With the initial run, I did have some color bleeding. Uh, so once I tune that and I can show you here where you would do that, uh, you do that with your purge volumes uh, and then you can use a multiplier or you can adjust them individually and ideally you just want them to not be red uh, and then that kind of manages how much uh, filament is purged uh, in between the color changes so once you get that dialed in and i was ready to kick off a regular print and guess what it worked. Uh, let me show you what I printed. So for my example, I used some dark colors. And the reason why is I really wanted to see if the blacks would bleed with the gray and things like that. I mentioned I had to adjust my purge volumes. Once I did, uh, I printed this little Lego night guy and uh, it turned out really, really well. There's no bleeding. All of the edges are sharp. Uh, the borders, everything turned out great. I'll show you a little close up of this guy. But uh, yeah, so second print, success, no issues at all really. Uh, and this is something you're gonna be able to continue to fine tune. Uh, I mentioned this being kind of a universal thing. Uh, so it's a single product designed to be used with a bunch of different printers. So you have to give it a little bit of grace with that because um, if it's designed for a bunch of different printers, it's not really designed for the printer that you're using it for. So you're gonna have to tweak and fine tune a little bit to get the result that you want. And we were able to do that relatively quickly. Uh, really, the only thing I had to do was that uh, auto load. And that's more of a convenience thing. And I think it's something they should include. Uh, and I will mention that to Coprint and, you know, adjust in our purge volumes, which may or may not differ uh, depending on your setup, your print speed, things like that. Uh, there's a number of different factors there. Uh, the nozzle itself worked pretty well. It's a high flow nozzle. Um, so we did dial that up. Uh, 25 millimeters a second was where I ended up with the volumetric flow. Uh, and I didn't have any issues with PLA. I only used PLA uh, initially. And I got a really good product. I'm very, very happy with this. Uh, so overall, um, good impressions. So is the Coprint KCM set worth it? It's $289 US. And honestly, after using this thing, I do think it has some good value for you. I like that it is adaptable. And what I mean by that is it will work with a number of different clipper printers. Uh, I'm gonna take it off of the SVO8 and I'm gonna try it on my Orange Storm Giga next. That's the kind of flexibility that the Coprint KCM set uh, might be able to give you if you have other printers you want to try and multi-print on as well. Overall, the quality was good. I didn't have any issues with any of the parts. Uh, once I got the mounts printed, what I settled on, it was easy enough to get everything mounted. Uh, those instructions were good for that part. So the instructions did kind of taper off. Um, I feel like they could have elaborated a little bit more. So I did have to turn to other resources. I utilized their Discord, which uh, lucky enough had all of the answers that I needed and some improvements. Um, so the community uh, has a very good following uh, and I would rely on that uh, to kind of find your way and make some changes as you need them for your printer. I think this is geared more towards the tinkerer, someone who likes to modify their printer, make some changes and has a, an okay understanding uh, with their printer configs and everything so you can fine tune and take advantage of um, really dialing this thing in. It works, it does what it's supposed to do, and the quality was good. So Coprint KCM set gets a thumbs up from me. I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch this video. Please like, subscribe, comment. I'm gonna throw this thing on the Orange Giga next, so stay tuned for that video. And I've got a couple other things coming up that you guys might like. So stay tuned, I'll see you guys in the next video.